Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Red Flood. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And right now, we've just finished up Executive Order for Federal Funding, which we got a lot of PP, but well, I think next we're going to go ahead and empower the farming unions. Farmers, especially immigrant farmers, are underrepresented, underpaid, and overexploited. This needs to end, and what better way to do that than give farming unions more power over bargaining? The land barons who exploit these honest people shall scream in terror as they realize the whips and chains they had no longer exist. And which I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should do union dominance versus level the playing field. And right now, there's more support for union dominance. So we will be going down that route, but let's first do some research, shall we? We shall. Uh, we're doing quite well with our naval stuff, actually. It is 38. Uh, we've got a couple other comments to go through as well, but let's read Union Dominance. It's still a long way to get to going, or a long way to getting to the country we've always dreamed of. Instead of expecting true socialism now, we should instead focus on improving the livelihoods of all Americans in more simple ways. That way, we can directly improve our popularity and ensure that future generations can use these tools to build towards the grand commonwealth of toil. In which we could keep going down there for extreme welfare, but I think for now, let's go ahead and like beeline down this side of the focus tree, so we at least can remove the Dust Bowl, which... Probably is hurting us quite a bit, so that'd be good to get rid of, right? But all this PP, we love the PP. Cool, fifteen fifty-nine, not bad for civvies. And we're gonna do the right job, the right to a job. Well, we're currently making one point two eight. Let the land settle. Ooh, oh, so let's do communal housing. Why not? The further success of the new housing programs has shown that we could start start building entire new towns and even cities out of these houses. New communities shall be built, and the promise of safe and happy living shall be sold at low and and affordable prices and rates. These new communities will showcase all that makes America great. A shared sense of community built by our individual strengths. It gets some excavation. Now, it's going to lower our stability, but we get plus 2% every week, so I'm not really too worried about that, but we're doing well down here. Let's grab some gun stuff, because we're probably going to need that for soft attack, which is pretty darn good. And we're going to modify our government, but I don't think there's really that many people here that we can choose things. Companies? Yeah, this company stuff is okay. It's not great. Uh, heavy equipment stuff, it's pretty kind of generico. And a lot of places are killing each other, which is, you know, kind of okay with us. Oh, soft attack, artillery, plus five. Oh, I love soft attack for those guys. But everything uses infantry equipment, so we'll go with that one. Community housing, yes, please. We lose a massive minus 40% stability, but that's all right. Up next, frogs in a frying pan. Ooh. I get some more stability, but we lose a lot of pee, -pee. Housing building projects. The success of the slum improvements programs have proven to many that public housing is a solid method of dealing with homelessness. We shall begin building even more houses designed to be simple, comfortable, and cost-effective. Every American should be able to be proud of their home, and never going to have to worry about sleeping on the cold streets. Every own state gets one infrastructure. Very nice. And that helped with construction speed as well. But a couple comments. Uh, okay, so, apparently Dunehammer Gaming says that everything will explode. What? Dune? No, no, Dune, I don't know about that, Dune. Especially since I made sure we down went down a very, very specific route. America definitely won't collapse by going down and electing a, oh, is it a revolutionary anarchist we are? Yeah, revolutionary anarchist. Of course it won't happen. What? Fake news. Fake propaganda. And uh, other people said we should do Scientology USA. Or There's a lot of support for us to do the Spiritualist California route, as well as do the Technates of America. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, No guarantees. But we'll do the best we can. Pray they learn from history. Is that... This is about Russia, is it? Usually when I see that image, is that about Austria? Huh. I definitely got... Oh, that's a nice Austria that they have here. I definitely would place Austria here. Oh, wait. Angle by Dolphus. Usually there's a certain Schmittler there, but okay. Frogs in a frying pan. Goodness gracious, this is chaotic. Everyone calm down for heaven's sake. It isn't the end of the world, you see. The moderates are getting a bit feisty over some of Flynn's reforms. This isn't good for us, so I say we start putting some heat on them and get them to understand where we are coming from. Then they may start to chill out and work with us. We lose 25% stability, 100 political power, and quite a bit of war support. These are huge numbers that we're dealing with here. And, wait, did we lose to... We got 25% more stability, which is nice. Community housing minus 40%, but... No, minus 25%, but then we'll do slum improvements. Those who aren't homeless but still broke often live in slums, which are poorly built, not well maintained, and even racially segregated. Oh my. This cannot go on any further. We shall instead invest in new, low-income housing with better design structures, safer locations, and no racial discrimination, at least for now. Every person has the right to live safely, and this is one of the ways we can ensure that. Very cool. 15, 15, 15 now. Nice. Keep building in San Francisco and Ohio and Minnesota. Not because I want to make those areas really great, especially California, but... Oh, 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 history's repeating itself. Japan declared war on Korea? Nice. And are we missing guns? Oh, we're still missing a lot of guns. We could build some civvies. You know what? Oh, millies, really. You know what? We could probably build at least one here. How about California? They love guns in California, right? Oh, what? Unassigned divisions. Oh, um, there you go. I guess. Yeah, sure, why not? 
Uh, do we need a field marshal? I guess. Frogs in a frying pan? Uh, let's go with Mason Matthews Patrick. Let's go with Mr. Dwight Eisenhower. And slum improvements. And if we need to, go ahead and train. Well, okay, there you go. And if we need to, there you go as well. Let's go with three for that. Some millies would be very nice. But after slum improvements, let the land rest. We lose some political power. Oh, that's a 70 day focus. Without a description, I guess we're letting it, literally letting it rest without doing anything here. Um, computing machine, machine would be very nice as well. It is still 38. So, we're going to go ahead and grab what? Planes? No, we're good. Naval stuff? Uh, smoke generators? Because we can't. Why not? 15, 15, 14. Oh, 14. Oh, that's not good. But a 70-day focus? Uh, what else do we have here? Crop rotations. That's not terrible. That's not good for us, though, really. Soil conservation. We get a lot more weekly stability. Wow. USA soil conservation. Bread basket once more. Not bad. The right to a job. Transfer the means of production. Oh, that's a lot less stability. But I guess we'll let the land rest. We lose 100 political power, but we get way more stability. But it's so long to do that for a focus. Oh, my goodness. That is such a long time. Annexation events. Oh, what does that even do? Oh, oh, start annexation events. They're, these are very high experimental. Okay. Let them turn it off then. That's fine. Communal domain. Oh. Wait, Galen gets a building slot. Sure, we could probably do that, but that's all right for now. We have enough naval XP. Just keep doing the naval stuff because that's actually really, seems really nice. Ukraine declare on Moldova. Molde Moldova. You Empire. Emperor Ivan the First. Do you have a unique. You do have a unique focus tree. Wow. Wait, no. Is it unique? It does look unique. Yeah. Wow, that is... Well, one of my mods is really going to like that. Actually, we haven't done our land auction yet. I guess we'll go superior firepower because that's tried and true, right? Just tried and true, so we might as well keep doing it. Orange community stuff. We'll get more stability. Revolutionary anarchist support. Local... Oh. Local militia elections. We lose political power with civilian construction speed. But, oh, you know what? Maybe we'll do that one. I like getting more... Uh, war support. We can only get 1.27 every single day. As stability continues to go up by plus two. Not bad. Smoke generators are very nice. It is still 38, so let's go ahead and grab what? Magnetic detonator, why not? Do we have any other ships as well? Moldova and Poland too. Oh, that's not bad. You guys go over there. They could probably use some more screens. Oh, yes, they could. Keep training, guys. You're never done training. That's what we pay people to be in the Navy for. Just train, train, train all day. Actually, do we have an intelligence agency? Uh, I don't want to create one yet, just because that's going to cost us some civvies. And 15, 15, 15, 2 is not bad, but still. But still. Okay, go up to 5 there. Good. And let's go ahead and grab what? Uh, let's grab some rubber. Because eventually we'll build up some synthetic refineries, probably. There's no guarantee we will, but probably. But after we let the land rest... <clears throat> Supreme Court shuffles might not be bad. Uh, let's do soil conservation. The dust will help dry up a lot of land and cause some severe droughts and famines amongst the population. We need to ensure that what land hasn't been dried up is protected and well managed, and that can be done by ourselves. That can only be done by the people and the government managing it together. That way everyone can get food from good food from a safe place. Plus three percent more weekly stability. Nothing bad can happen here if we get so much stability, right? And crop rotation. There's no oh. Well, consumer goods goes up, but then division attrition goes down, huh? Crop rotations. Is it attrition? Hmm. Okay, well, whatever. Alrighty, tighty then. So we're not having to do any war stuff earlier on. I guess it is America, but still, like... It feels weird not doing... We're kind of preparing for war with building up our industry, but still. Oh, another division? Nice. There you go. Just in case you need to really train. And that's a 35-day focus, 35-day focus, and then another 35-day focus. Dust begins to settle. I'd love to get through that. I don't know if we'll be able to... The right to a job is not bad, but I don't want to lose PP. And there goes crop rotations. Next research should be done in about a uh, less than two weeks. But the bread basket once again. There's still no f description here. Oh, that sucks. Well, I like to read descriptions just to see what type of flavor events we get. But that's all right. And after this one, as close to 39, let's get some more output. Cool. 15 days, not bad. German Socialist Republic. Ah, oh, where are you? Anna Sagers. I definitely gotta play Germany, Germany again. I played Goebbels once, which was a lot of fun, but definitely gotta play them again. I remember this. I don't know why this reminds me of Führerreich, but that mod, your Führerreich. I don't know. I haven't looked at that mod in a very long time. Uh, does Hungary have a unique focus tree? Please tell me they do. Oh, they don't. Hungary. Why does no one like Hungary? Is it because they're Hungarian? It might be because of that. 15, 15, 15, 3. Not bad. Keep building up California and San Francisco. Not because of any reason. 
but just because I think they should be built up the most, probably. No, wink, wink, nudge, 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 yes. Stability and political power, yes, please. Even though we already have 83% stability. And we get plus 5% every single week, so... Not bad. What is this? Export focus? We could lower that. Actually, we could probably raise it up to get even more uh, construction speed, but meh. And manpower is okay as well. Uh, Southeastern Union sounds pretty good to us. Does Mexico have unique focus tree in this campaign or this thing? The Social Democrats? You got. You have definitely have a soft chin. That's very soft, almost like a doughboy chin. Oh boy. Uh, get some construction. We like construction. Now what? Now what part of this year will things start exploding? Far East Republic. Cool. Manchuria. Very nice. Very nice. And then we'll do the right to a job. Everyone has a right to work, regardless of who they are. No one should be left unemployed and broke because of the greed of a plutocrat. The government shall make the right to work federal law and guarantee employment for everyone, be they citizen or migrant, white or black, man or woman. I don't want her to pee pee though. I mean, you still get you know a good amount, but I I hate hurting my pee pee. Ten percent more uh, factory output is not bad, but still. And it looks like industrial workers of the world. That's what the party we're part of. Yeah. And support's still going up every single day to 42.85%. Community health schemes, oh, let's take a look. Crop rotations, soil conservation. Um, yep, dominance, nice. Community food, daily revolutionary support. Dust Bowl really hurts us. And we still have the clan here, so we're not doing anything about the clan at all, which is kind of weird, but okay. Research, yes, please. And daily doctrine. At least we got one thing done for our land doctrine. After the right to the job, transfer the means of production. Our control over all three branches means that we can do the impossible. Use the tools of the government to transition to so true socialism. Though unlikely and utopian by liberals and Leninists alike, we have proven them all wrong. We can ensure that this nation becomes the land of the oppressed. If it was always meant to be. Come on, come on, from whatever background, faith, or creed, or person you may be, to the American Republic of Labor. We lose a smacking minus 50% stability, but we get some... We get four civvies midway. I, midway and Panama Canal... That's not even in the continental U.S. And the okay, well, oh, whatever. Hopefully we do well. Gun wise, we're doing a little better, and support equipment doing a little better as well, which is nice. Um, more weekly stability. You know what? We could probably do it too, just for funsies. And yeah, you know what? Screw it. Get some more weekly war support because we we could probably use it, right? Forty-four percent. Let's. How high can we get this? Probably not that much higher, but that's okay. And then the dust begins to settle. There's no description here, but consumer goods and stability goes up. Where's dust bowl? Uh, Great Depression, which is really bad still. Oh, that's pretty bad as well. Uh, Dust Bowl. Okay, so we have 15% and 5%. 15, 5. So we'll basically have still minus 10% consumer goods. Or t actually plus 10% consumer goods, which is bad for us. United Anti-Japanese Farmers Annex. Okay, well, goodbye then. Oh, they lost. And we get slightly more stability, which is fine, whatever. Courtney Hodges, do you have any upgrades? No, Panzers, not for now. The dust begins to settle. Nice. And hopefully we can get done and the Dust Bowl. At last, the tyranny of the Dust Bowl has ended. Now we must rebuild communities and ensure that those who are displaced can return home and have work, food, and stability. It'll be difficult rebuilding, but it, we shall come out stronger for it. We remove the thing, it gets more war support, and some more political power, which would be nice. And we're almost done with their naval doctrine, which is weird. Which I actually really enjoy. I love the naval doctrine, I love navy, naval stuff, which means I'll love all the tanks of hopefully when up the patch for Barbarossa comes out. So, oh, not bad, that's actually looking better. Percentage-wise, this is doing much better than this one, so that's not bad. We still get, oh, 0.93, that sucks. Communal domains? Wake Island's nice and all. I guess we could if we really wanted to. Doesn't really matter too much. Oh, wait, do we finish the millies? Uh, we could use a few more millies here in California for no reason, yes. We could build some dockyards here too, but that's okay for now. Naval stuff, three more ships, 16, 9, there you go. Oh, that's a carrier too. Uh, uh, these these great warships really slow down uh, your battleships, but that's alright, whatever. And the Dust Bowl. But that's like one of the things I've been kind of paying attention more to, because you can only go as fast as your slowest ship. So, usually I don't want to put too many carriers with like old, heavy battleships. If I want to use carriers, I don't mind putting with them, but sometimes I want task forces to have them by themselves, because they can move so much faster sometimes. So that's why I kind of like them. Okay, so, if we can continue, after the Dust Bowl, we will go ahead and do some, I want her stability actually more, but Supreme Court Shuffle. We shouldn't even have the court in the first place. It's a decadent and archaic institution designed to represent the interests of the wealthy and powerful, and not the American people. If it has to exist, it should work for the people. Let's get some of the hags out and begin to put in some more respectable and reasonable people in their place. We get more stability and a little bit less political power, and there goes Fiume. Cool. Two divisions. Cool. Head on down there. And Elizabeth Gurley Flynn, Big Mama, as some might like to refer to her. We have a Black Legion. Cool. 
And after that one, let's go ahead and do Intimidate the Senate. That would never have any problems, but let's do stringent regulation. Companies have far too many loopholes in taxation, labor law, wages, the list goes on. The government of plutocrats has put the American worker in a horrible place, and the capitalists in a great one, but no longer. We shall pass new laws to ensure that they can't so easily squeeze out any respons responsibility from now on. The governor of Vermont assassinated, what is this, Red, Red World? Fanfork? The growing social disorder in America has not been without bloodshed, even at the higher levels of the nation. A shockingly high-profile assassination has taken place in New England, where an unidentified anarchist, or so claimed, has shot and killed Governor George Eichen in Vermont. The relatively liberal Republican had been a supporter of much of the JPP program for America, but his clashes with the more heavy-handed initiatives of the Flynn administration has evidently made him a visible obstacle to some radicals on the ground. This news has been a shock to much of the country amid the current chaos. As Lieutenant Governor William Henry Wills takes up the responsibilities of the deceased governor, a number of attitudes have hardened against the federal government. The perception goes that the JPP cannot protect even a reformist liberal politician, or God forbid, if the supporters and party militants have cited their crosses on someone like him, what will be enough to satisfy these anarchists? Whether it was the intent of the administration or not, the event is deep in the divide between the government and the opposition. This may prove fatal. Oh well. It's just one governor, right? No one remembers Vermont too much, right? Or is it New Hampshire? Maybe it's, maybe it's New Hampshire. I can't remember. It's all part of New England, right? Except Vermont is not. <laughs> New Hampshire's in. Vermont is not. They're not part of New England, apparently. Vermont declares independence from the USA. Oh boy, the breaking point has come. Well, to some degree, anticipated. It's still shocked that Governor H... J William H. Wills has announced the secession of the Vermont Republic. Backed by a wide spectrum of forces within the state, the governor stated that the good people of Vermont will not stand idly by and have their freedom destroyed by anarchist mismanagement and mob rule. Vermont is thus forging its own way independently of Washington to look, better, look after its own affairs. Governor Wills has technically not ruled out Vermont's return to the Union once sanity prevails once more, but this gesture of a, is a gun thrown down before the federal government. Furthermore, the Declaration of Independence will embolden other secessions and rebels in the USA. It's all but certain that this will not be the end of the regime's troubles. The Vermont Republic, in the meantime, will luckily have an interesting course to chart in the next few years. Disaster's begun. Um, do you actually have a unique focus tree? You do not. That's kind of disappointing. No, no, you're not allowed to leave. It's weird. A southern state didn't, ha didn't secede. With the clan probably still there. But Vermont did. The declaration of the Amco Resta Unsta. The revolution gains a new foe. Further away from the federal authority in the Deep South, establishment politicians of business interests have coordinated a rival government through an anarchist experiment in the U.S. State governments from Virginia to Mississippi, by earnest conviction over by threat of military force, have thrown their weight behind a self-styled legitimist American government. Marine Captain George R. E. Shell has been nominated as interim leader of the broad coalition of opposition parties until new elections can be held. It is one consolation for the current American regime. The hastily assembled committee has thus far been slow to promote a program to unite against or unite its resistance around. With the federal response to this declaration of among hamstring being hamstrung by the chaotic transition to anarchist rule, the ultimate path of the so-called emergency committee remains to be seen. The geographic position of the committee means there is a strong chance it will become dominated by southern interests. Whether they will continue to seek to restore bourgeois government through the U.S. of A or reignite the flame of Dixie remains to be seen. Whatever their future plans, a significant portion of the country is broken with the federal government. Away down south in the land of traitors... And Dixie's land will make her stand. That sounds like so much fun. Cool. Now that's really cool. Even though they don't have Arkansas and Louisiana and Texas and Oklahoma. Our Isha. Did they even make right being a third? Oh, we don't have any focus tree. Oh, that's so sad. No, my Norfolk. Oh, Norfolk is their capital, huh? Not Atlanta or Charleston or Miami. Well, we just shuffled the Supreme Court, so whatever. Intimidate Senate. Well, stringent regulations. A new 1775, with a die cast, the discontent in New England has grown into full rebellion. Many expected further turmoil in the Northeast after the secession of Vermont and an official rival government to the USA. Few likely expect the spark to be lit by journalists. Howard Phillips Lovecraft, I heard he has a really great name for his cap. A nationally syndicated columnist and occasionally short story author from Rhode Island has been one of the most uh, stringent public critics of government failures throughout the Great Depression. His preoccupations with nativism and civilization being under threat have resonated with many witnessing the decay of civil society in America, and even more so with the current secessions. Additionally, an inner circle of authors and other public intellectuals known as Arkham Society have reportedly been quite vocal and militant in the face of potential social unrest and are an anarchist, anarchist agitation in the Northeast, organizing sympathetic locals to maintain order. But in the paralytic, paralytic state of government, Lovecraft and supporters have thrown down the gauntlet before the governor's New England. 
In an open letter accompanying his appearance in Boston, he set up for the governors of the remaining states to secede under a new government, one that seems to likely be playing a major role in a unifying figure. The sudden declaration of secession suggests Lovecraft has given the states the final push to act against the federal government. New England is a na new nation, or perhaps a rival government to the USA, will likely be a center of power in the American chaos. But the continued independence of Vermont may suggest there is more than ha to having a unified movement and government than simply saying it exists. Artists are a lot of troubles these days, even writers. Oh, that's why they do that. Ah, Mr. Handsome. And they don't have any focus tree. Guys, why y'all leaving? We just doing the best we can. Who's next? Is it please tell me it's Texas? The Empire State oh darn declares independence. To make matters worse in the Northeast, the new New York State government has also declared secession from the US. Setting the chaos in the region and federal inability to restore order, a provisional government led by former mayoral front runner William Odwer has mobilized a National Guard to protect the state from a supposed brewing anarchist insurrection, as well as resist being dragged into any revolutionary wars against fellow Americans to the east. To some extent, this has merit, given that much of New York City has been unwilling to accept Fiorella Lagarde's suspicious resignation to, on top of already existing left-wing sentiment. O'Dwyer and the interests backing him are sitting on the top of a powder keg. With this much declaration, a major JPP stronghold is separated from the federal government, as well as much human and industrial capital. Will the New York government be able to resist the undoubtedly forthcoming response? Additionally, can they resolve the social tensions boiling away in their state? What will New York's place be in New England, or a New America for that matter? Protecting the jewel of the eastern seaboard from those who might shatter it? Curse them. Hey, what's up, New York? Never been to New York. That flag, I mean... I like that it's animated. Oh, close your mouth, man. People might think other things. But, no, New York, that flag is okay. I'm not saying my state flag is not bad. Not great, but it's, that's actually not too bad. Texas is, is cool. North Carolina is not too bad. The Protocol Emmett enacted. It's been long rumored that the Mormon region has a secret plan to form their own country should things turn bad. Cool! Over the past 18 days, this has proven a reality. A plan called Protocol Emmet, named for the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, has been enacted. And in 15 days, a desertian constitution written in 1847 has been removed from its glass gates in the Utah governor's offices. Declared to once more be in effect, emergency elections were called. A council of 50 comprised... Um, <clears throat> entirely of clergy of different sects, the Senate and the House of Representatives have been elected, and the U.S. Constitution has been stolen and moved to Salt Lake City to protect the holy document from the lawlessness. Or from the lawless. And the Supreme Court was appointed in three more days. After taking the oath of office, Council President Grant offered a, spe a speech to a tightly packed Temple Square where he stated, The uh, Theo-Democratic Republic of Desert will serve as a bastion of order and religious liberty in a collapsing U.S. Whether we shall restore the Union or take up Romanto's God's Chosen Republic in North America seems, remains to be seen, but either way, our future is bright, and anarchy will never threaten the saints again. I urge all saints who live under the boot of tyranny or in fear of lawlessness to come to desert to be free. The speech went on for another hour. Upon its completion, Temple Square erupted into cheers and thunderous applause for another ten minutes. They willingly choose tyranny. We must free them from themselves. That's a fat desert. Wow. You don't even have all of it. What the heck? Navajo. I guess it makes sense for Navajo. Uh, now, this sounds like these guys... He's got a lot of hair. Haber Jetty Grant. Oh, you don't have a new focus tree. Why? Oh. Ah, Mormons. Man, they have a lot of babies, at least from what I heard. They have a lot of kids. All right, is so he long? As he he's dead. He got attacked by a hippo, right? A lesson in imagined communities. The deep political divisions in America do not easily follow lines on a map, while most of the states arising from the American collapse appear to be contiguous territories representing the interests of one people or ideology. The reality is never so simple. Drilling down through regions and states, a number of familiar tensions exist within communities. Urban and rural, left and right, sometimes race and race, depending on where you go. And these divided communities can cross our little neat borders to compl complicate matters. Does a black sharecropper in Alabama have more in common with a legislator in Birmingham, or does another sharecropper in or with another sharecropper in Mississippi. This is a coal mine in West Virginia. Found a common struggle with a tobacco farmer in, T in Kentucky. This is hardly a new line of thought whether championing pan-nationalism or the solidarity of, uh, solidarity of workers, but as movements for independence or overthrowing the federal government multiply, they find themselves crowding on the same stage to be heard on the border between the states of Oregon and California right now. For example, the rural and underdeveloped communities there may share common grievances against similar foes, one that's, ones that are in Washington. Don't tell me this is foreshadowing something. Oh, Florida. It's been a year since I've been to Florida. And I don't have plans to go back currently. Alright. How are we going to go kaboom? Hey, 50%. I guess if people secede, they can't really do much. But the declaration in Kanawha? Kanawha? Is that like Wisconsin or Illinois? More and more ground continues to be contested in the good old U.S. of A. Where loyalties are split, the contest is sometimes resolved in bloodshed. For now, however, the states of West Virginia and Kentucky... Oh... 
on the southern fringe of federal authority and a border in the Emergency Committee for the Reestablishment of America seceded under joint administration, hearkening back to a proposed name for what would eventually become West Virginia. It seems the two state governments are reaching for a solution for, to their instability, temporary or not. The strong orator Matthew M. Neely, Democratic governor of and former senator for West Virginia, evidently managed to sway enough people to his cause to become the front men of the new regime despite being rather progressive for the region and apparently wishing he'd just stay in the Senate instead of being elected for this position this year. Kanawha seems destined for a contin contentious time with a population divided by class and politics. The Harlan County war between organizing miners and their bosses is yet to abate and may only intensify if the new government chooses to abrogate workers' rights legislation passed under President Cox. Labor militants seen harsh responses to it have been uh, have had a long history along the, across the two states. In these uncertain times, does the new state have a chance of survival? But they say there are no neutrals in Harlan County. That is disgusting. That is Kentucky with a bulge. A very big bulge. We all know about bulges here, I guess. All right, who's next for America? Battle Royale. Not Korea, apparently. How's Japan doing? Far East Republic? Hey, not bad. Yeah, they have no focus. No, no, no faction, I should say. Oh, it's kind of younger. And they do have a unique focus tree, which is kind of cool. Nice. Any other divisions? Go and just do whatever you, or go wherever you want. That's fine for now. And since people are leaving anyways, we might as well go ahead and uh, intimidate the Senate. Another archaic and stupid institution, the Senate was formed in order to control the House of Representatives and limit the power of the American people. In Flynn's new America, this isn't going to fly. Instead, she's going to make them either run scared or toe the line. No longer are they going to represent the fat cats. They shall act in favor of the working class. Amen. And? I like how they've stopped. I guess that makes it a stop at the, what was it, Mississippi? The Mississippi? The mighty Mississippi. I heard she got a muddy mouth. Uh, anyway, let me give her that. Anyways. Declaration of Independent Kingdom of Hawaii, of course. As the U.S. sheds more and more territory, the departure of the territory of Hawaii was perhaps expected. The growing movement for self-government by the native Hawaiians was no secret to entrenched American corporate interests, as the dual food companies hiring of protective militias indicated, but between the masses of Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, Portuguese laborers and the motivated native Hawaiians, so far away from American mainland, there was perhaps only one likely outcome, a front ranging from the royal order of Kamehameha I to the Democratic Party of Hawaii's top of the government of the territory and established a new native government under Theresa La Launi La Aui. The so called independent kingdom of Hawaii stands defined at the Pacific, having chosen its name as a warning to all who would be contenders who would seek to restore colonialism on the archipelago. Theresa Owana Kaho Lani La Aui I've been in Hawaii like years ago, like 20 years ago, has a messy history as a claimant to the royal line of Hawaii. The so-called Princess Teresa has been embroiled in legal conflicts over royal wills and estates and her status as a member of the branch family of the royal house of House of Kamahamaha. Despite that, she has also been a public icon for Hawaii as a public dignitary who hobbled with foreign monarchs and an advocate for the restoration of the royal rule in Hawaii under her ages, and even one time press baron successfully advocating for voting rights for local Hawaiians. The new leader of the country undoubtedly has many steps in take, to take in deciding what the new ship of Hawaii's government will be, but will also but will also be contending with threats within and without from corporate and white interests and imperial powers. Can the independent kingdom of Hawaii prevent its name from becoming a cruel joke in the coming years? The American Empire continues to collapse? Yeah, what do you expect? I love how they're trying to be independent, but they use baits. They have the British flag on there. That's really independent. Really independent. Going back to the older days. Can they get like a... What would be a native Hawaiian flag? I don't know. I don't. I know very, very little about Hawaii. But apparently, this is a matter because like 15, 15, 15, 15. We got even more factors than we had before. But Missouri declares independence. Oh, Missouri! The fracturing of the continental U.S. has continued to pace with the secession of the state of Missouri. What is surprising to observers is that the state is not aligned with any other contender for federal power. In a statement announcing the secession, Lieut Governor Lloyd C. Stark, a Democrat the rather more progressive state party being in better shape than the federal one, has declared the intent of Missouri to be left out of the imminent combat east of Mississippi. For now, it seems many of his, uh, most of his political allies and opposition can agree with that aim. In many ways, a case study in progressive era forms. Missouri also serves as a hub of agriculture and industry in the Midwest. The Art Deco landscape of Kansas City is a major site of transportation and meatpacking, though it remains unclear what kind of disruption the breakdown of America has caused to this midpoint between the Texas cattle herds and the eastern cities. It is likely that Governor Stark, whoever replaces him, will have his work cut out for him, preserving the state's integrity when Missouri may prove vital to other people's plans. The collapse continues. Well, that's so weird to see Missouri by themselves. That flag is okay. It reminds me of the Netherlands a lot. Been in Missouri twice. Two or three times. 
I can't really. I, I should have stopped in St. Louis, but we had. Well, I couldn't stop there. I should go to St. Louis sometime. Oh yeah, and this part. Of, oh yeah, but our emergency committee expands. With the continued splintering of America, actors who had reservations about taking action find their hands forced by circumstances. This is the case in the Pacific Northwest, where news filtering out of the state capitals brings words of armed forces declaring allegiance to the Emergency Committee for the Reestablishment of America. The existence of a legitimate American faction has evidently motivated state governors and business leaders to invite the military to step in and stop the social conflict brewing in the region. The results thus far have been conclusive. Soldiers backed with ordnance dropped from the skies have launched a surprisingly coordinated series of crackdowns in major cities, scattering anarchists and other pro-federal militants. Militants. From the steps of Seattle, First Lieutenant Donald Z. Zimmerman has declared the new legions to, of the zone under his control, seeking to ally with the government claimants in Dixie to restore order to Washington. Of course, as often is the case in the USA now, matters are not so simple. The geographical distance between the main line and Pacific Northwest emergency committees has prevented political unification between the two and is unknown what regional interests will come to dominate the new one in the near future. Furthermore, as dazzling as Zimmerman's initial restoration of order has been, it is unclear whether anarchists have been decisively defeated or whether other political movements will stay quiescent under military rule. Quiescent. As the nation's situation, national situation grows more chaotic, it is doubtful that the fighting in the Northwest has truly ended. The reactionary establishment splits like the Russian whites? Western Emergency Command? That reminds me of Ireland's flag. Huh. Right wing authoritarian? No. Nini Kwokshi? Okay. Alright, who's next? Oh, I want to say Navajo. I want to say Navajo are going to leave. Or it could be the Dakotas. That'd be cool. Ah, we intimidated the Senate, which doesn't make sense since the people are leaving anyways, but increase the corporate tax? Corporations pay per virtually no tax at the present moment despite making billions of dollars. That's even worse considering how your average worker pays more in taxes despite having less money. The first step to solving this dilemma is increasing taxes upon corporations, putting them in their place, and giving the government more money to spend on the many areas it needs to cover. And? Do we lose Illinois, Chicago, or Detroit, and Wisconsin? No, we get excavation. Alright, well, we'll take that. Declaration of California Independence. I was wrong completely. On the far side of the country from the federal capital, great in size and population, it was inevitable that California would become another center of power in the collapsing USA. The Declaration of Secession is still a minor shock all the same from the city of Riverside, chosen as a neutral ground for the big factions supporting independence, but also notably given the Mexican War scare, the location with the Anglophone name, a broad front of the state Democratic and Republican parties, a jobless progressive party under Upton Sinclair, and controversially, the spiritual party under Edward Longstreet Bowden have come together to support California's exit from the Union. Thus far, the new, or perhaps reborn, Calif Republic of California has maintained its ex existing state institutions as it charts its new independent course, but this may not last. The large state has a varied population with varied ambitions. With the recovery from the Great Depression nowhere near complete, California could risk becoming the former USA in miniature, a dissent-ridden ba basket case, ripe for radical politics and solutions. Regardless, a newly independent state seems sure to be a major contender for power in the region. Eh, flag. Oh, Riverside Council. And they do have a unique focus tree, which is very cool. Um, actually, let's make a save now. And you know what I'm going to call this? I'm going to call this Red Flood California Save. Because we might come back and play as them. So, but I do want to see who else pops out in the other events for them. Someone's going to pop out here. Ah, it's State of Jefferson, probably, or something like that. Texas succeeds? Well, we all saw that one coming. Situation on the frontier is Lucius Limit. In the state of Texas, in particular, the deterioration de uh, deterioration of our order resembles the anarchy in the immediate aftermath of the surrender of the Confederate States of America. The threat of foreign invasion, lack of federal control, and the state economy plunging through the floor again after federal aid programs collapse has driven secession of the Republic of Texas. The circumstances of Texan independence has been messier than expected, however. With attempts by civil civilian authorities to declare independence or contain the materializing Mexican invasion falling into infighting. Air Force Captain Otto P. Whalen has emerged at the front of the military government. Whalen has thus far indicated that the Army would take on extraordinary powers to protect Texas. Whether this is a prelude to civilian government or just the creation of a new military clique is hard to say. Business interests, those concerned with the border, and opponents of the new federal government have been tentatively optimistic with the new government, but this will continue if... But will this continue if elections are not held? It's unclear if Texas will throw its lot in with the Emergency Committee for Reestablishment of the USA, or attempt to forge a new path independent once more. Either way, the state's sizable territory, population, and resources at its disposal, even if it has potential social disorder and armed conflict in its future. Remember the Alamo? Very cool. Oh, wait, Mexico got something. Oh, they got El Paso? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, they don't have a new focus tree? Oh. That is such a sad Texas. Oh boy. Becoming a Louisiana. 
Shock and awe reigns as today, as rumors confirm accelerationism in the French models to come to the American mainland. Oh boy. The social situation in Louisiana and Arkansas, already contentious with the depression's impacts on farming the powerful racial divide, had only been made worse in the splintering of federal authority. Some sort of uprising or regime change was expected, but what came next defied all expectations, of course. The French diplomatic missions to the USA had a reputation given the antics in their home country, but the consulate general de France à la Nouvelle France was another story entirely. The rumors of having been particularly dominated by the ACFL were likely more than rumors if their frequent visits to the less savory parts of the city were any indication. Perhaps they were conducting more than diplomacy and debauchery in the last year, but it's too late to discuss these connections fruitfully now. In short, the Dillinger gang has overthrown the government of Louisiana, greeting, greeting excited onlookers and local journalists with a shower of money from recent bank robberies. John Dillinger is trading on his Robin Hood reputation to position himself as a popular folk hero to save the poor and desperate, desperate of the region. As the banners bearing the ACFL civil roll out and the Consulate General makes approving noises about the salvaging parts of America from communist degeneracy, it is difficult not to read the situation as some sort of coup on the part of the avant-garde France. To make matters more suspicious, Dillinger's named the American author John S. Burroughs, one of the more vocal champions of his cause in the French artistic currents, to be the kingfish of the newly independent acceleration estate. With a similar coup underway in Arkansas by supposedly a spontaneous mob at the state house chanting for John Dillinger, it seems a radical regime is securing itself in the American self. It's uncertain what horrors the duo of the hedonistic libertine and hardened criminal will unleash in the coming months, diplomatically. Louisiana is likely to become to some degree of hostile to both the anarchists and the emergency committee, which may prove their undoing, but with a new world struggling to come forth, could they be the best suited to take advantage of this time of monsters? Oh, goodness. Louisiana, I never thought I'd see them independent. Who the heck are you? Hedonist, southern resistance, low legitimacy, and no unique focus tree, which is fine, whatever. We all still in DC, right? Cool. And who's next? When's the Navajo gonna rise up? Because only California has had uh, a unique focus tree so far that we've seen. Oh, how mighty that they have hath fallen. The trencher solves. Greater California idea. That's cool. cool. And technocratic Oklahoma declares independence. Oh, boy. The apparent collapse of the central authority in the USA has led to a number of desperate, disparate factions staking out their claims on the country's corpse. Nevertheless, a faction of the government's agricultural relief was an unexpected contender for power in the American heartland. Having declared that the collapse of federal authority jeopardizes efforts to revive American farming and combat the Dust Bowl, which we got rid of, Benton McKay's technocrats have presented a thinly veiled ultimatum to the Oklahoma state government. Backed up with a number of armed farmers, the cont contents of this ultimatum have effectively transferred governmental authority to a board of experts headed by McKay himself until a sufficiently competent and stable government prevails in the U.S. Practically speaking, Oklahoma has seceded from the federal authority at last. Oklahoma's future is uncertain. While McKay's work is well respected in the states afflicted by the Dust Bowl, there are many other factions in the region vying for power. It remains to be seen what the ultimate fate of its technocratic clique will be, however. It would be unwise to dismiss the new government as being pure diliantes and scientists. It's unclear whether or not they'll seek to expand their system into neighboring states. Someone remind me why we appointed him? Oh, Texas took that part of Oklahoma. Oh, boy. That is a weird, but kind of okay flag. And generic focus tree, right? Yeah, generic focus tree, cool. Well, I guess what we gotta do next is extreme welfare. Extreme, ha! It would be more accurate to call it necessary. More money to be put into welfare programs to reduce the suffering and even death of the poor, disabled and hardworking people of this country. No one deserves to suffer under such conditions, not a single person. What about New Mexico? Or Arizona? Tucson? Idaho? Montana? The Dakotas secede. A standing room only in the continental U.S. as another faction has declared its secession from federal authority. The extremely controversial governor of North Dakota, nonpartisan league member William Wild Bill Langer, has for the second time in his career attempted secession from the USA. A flurry of activity in the state capitals, Bismarck and Pierre, has been observed in recent days after the assassination of South Dakota Governor Harlan J. Bushfield, with NPL party members of both sides of the border reaching out to the remaining center of authority in the two states to take extraordinary measures to preserve the region's stability. Into this void steps of populace, Wild Bill has declared the secession of United Dakota Republic, of course. Langer's rule over the two states seems destined for to, to be controversial. Beloved by many in North Dakota for his freewheeling economic populism and political showmanship, his reputation does not necessarily extend south of the border. Many are still asking questions about what this secession means for Wild Bill's future and political ambitions, and the strangely coordinated takeover of two states. Can this man really steer the ship of state through the storm? Really? No one shot him after the first declaration of secession? No one cared. Oh, he's blonde. And he generic focus tree. We're still doing well with this stuff. 
Is Iowa going to rebel? Is New Jersey going to become like Little Italy or something like that? Oh, carriers. There you go. Military clique forms in Denver. I forgot about Colorado. Warlordism comes to the American West today. News was received that military forces headquarters in Denver, Colorado have established a so-called emergency government to protect the people of Colorado and New Mexico from all external threats. The first sound received of this declaration, soldiers under Lieutenant Colonel Omar Bradley marched into New Mexico to issue an ultimatum to the state government. Citing the continued breakdown of the American government under anarchy subversion and long-rumored Mexican invasion of the border states, it appears the glorified military clique has justified its presence through opposition to federal policy and protecting American Ter territorial integrity through force of arms. However, farcical it may be to sum the facts on the tower that on the ground that Washington cannot immediately intervene to stop them. To make matters worse, the message of Clinton and the clique has also indicated their willingness to align with the emergency committee for the reestablishment of the U.S. Bradley's New Mexico Colorado Emergency Government, otherwise known as Nemico has potential enemies on all sides who want to secede or resist the emergency committee, but also potential allies who may find common cause of protecting American territorial integrity, well armed and supplied via the Denver military arsenal. They are the one of the more professional military forces in the region. This may make their resources a tempting target for other factions, though. What a catastrophe! That is weird. New Mexico. That is weird. New Mexico and Colorado allying? Is that. Do they have really good relations? Do they really like each other that much? I have no idea. I've never been to Colorado or New Mexico, but that seems really weird. At least to me. What about Arizona? Or Oregon? Or this that part of Oregon? The Navajo, there we go, take matters into their own hands. With well, the sorry state of the U.S. federal administration, when the, with the secession of a number of states and regimes cutting off the southwest from Washington, the situation along the Mexican-American border has grown untenable. Effectively, a void of power has been formed with state governments fending for themselves. California and Texas went their own way. And the military clique under Omar Bradley charged into New Mexico, but another power structure exists in the area, the Navajo Nation, or as they call themselves, the Diné. Navajo lands, the Declaration of Independence was almost a fake accompli. The U.S. federal government and state governments in New Mexico and Arizona were simply incapable of asserting their authority over this tribe. Recent clashes against the federal government who are intruding on their way of life only provided further inputs or impetus. Into the situation steps the unity government under their Chi Dodge, an elder statesman who has had many titles in his time. Head chief of the Navajo, as artificial as that position was, chairman of the Navajo Business Council, and a survivor of the long walk in 1864 as a small child. Never another. Another party into the fray. Okay, and we see the Navajo. It's a really weird name I can't even pronounce. Yeah, that's a cool flag. No unique focus for now. That's fine. So we have Kansas, Nebraska, Montana, Wyoming. A very small population. Uh, Minnesota, Iowa, submarine defensives. Sign us up. Extreme welfare. Followed up with what? Oil processing. Cool. Healthcare for all. Wow, we lose a lot of PP. As we said before, the ability to live safely and freely is a right, not a privilege. Our government should lead the world in providing health care for every single one of our citizens and ensure that they don't have to worry about expensive health costs. Only then we can call this country free because that is the ability to be free from fear. Right information? Um, yeah, I don't want to do that one yet. Lib Ooh, libraries of knowledge, libraries of tools. Why would we choose that one? Libraries of knowledge first. Every worker should be able to hold his own when it comes to intelligence. That means expanding the library system and encouraging workers to read whatever they please during their breaks, after all. A smarter worker is a better worker, along with not being a tool of the bourgeoisie. Nice. A German-American boon declares Volkstadt. America's manifold problems grow again. Further away from the core of governmental control territory, the German-American boon has managed to seize territory of its own. Fritz Kuhn, riding into the states of Kansas and Nebraska in support of the Volksboon militants, has declared the Volkstadt of America. The party banners were waved triumphantly as the first Bundes administration begins to take shape in the center of the USA, a new radical nationalist and socialist regime that has come to ostensibly rescue its countrymen from anarchist misrule. While the new Volkstadt has just stopped short of declaring war on the federal government, it is clear that the Bund is calling the shots in the heart of America. Administration of the two states is in the hands of this hardline communist faction, whatever that entails, and where the Kuhn will be temporary ally of the government and blocking the American military government or a threat to the western flank is likewise unclear. After all, the Boone's headquarters before the secession was in New York City, and they may have militants in the east of the country to call upon for support. The ambitions of this radical global site movement are surely great, and they're stepping into a shattered union to achieve them. We need to keep an eye on those closet reactionaries, and that's a nice Volkstadt. And of course, he's got the hat. Well, he's a socialist vanguardist. They have libertarian Marxists, revolutionary anarchists, and vanguard socialists. Wow. Oh, yeah, we that too. Cool, there you go. I'm just, like, watching what's going on here, so. Alright, who's next? We still have these guys. Oh! Wow. That's kind of ballsy, isn't it? Wow. That kind of sucks. 
Oh yeah, we see you guys here. Head on up to DC. We won't lose DC, right? Butler's clique forms. Another fragment of the USA breaks off from federal authority. The situation complicates with the fact that this one is not necessarily antagonistic to the radicals in power to Washington. Marine Corps Major General Smedley Butler while in Serpentuous. Mission West engaged the loyalty of the military establishment, has evidently st stepped foot in the void of power in Montana and Wyoming. While he's not been especially forthcoming with his reasoning, it can be assumed that the new military regime in the region has similar motivations as Nemico to the south, the protection of Americans in the occupied states. There has not been a similar panic about invasion from the north, but Butler's loyal military forces have been welcome, uh, been welcome manpower for tamping down social instability in the area. Instability potentially made worse by the secession of the Dakotas cutting it off from the federal government. But what this means for the battle royale in America, no one can truly say. Butler has yet to declare his allegiance to the emergency committee like so many other military-led factions. And his clique's future direction is thus unknown. The diplomatic isolation of this new contender is only made less troubling by its physical isolation, however. Major General Butler's possible populist leanings may keep him from becoming an unwelcome presence for the Americans in the region, and could herald less hostile relations with the federal government and nearby states. As long as he doesn't declare himself King of Wyoming or something like that. Ah, the Butler clique. Ah, Buffalo. Big ol' Buffalo. Oh, we're running out of fuel. Oh, no wonder we don't have Texas. Alright, I'll stop doing training then. And we're out. Daily gain 4400. That's actually not too bad. Are we still trading? Happy 1940, though. Secession of Jefferson. Here we go. The fragmentation of the American mainland seems to show no signs of slowing down. Or this could be the final stone in the pile. It appears that the long standing resentment of where government attention and infrastructure development was focused has led to a revolt against abandonment of a region crossing state lines. Dissent, dissident citizens and militias of the Pacific Seaboard have mobilized to declare the independence of the Republic of Jefferson from the authority of the Emergency Committee in California. The former mayor of uh, Port Orford, Oregon, Gilbert Gabble, announced the establishment of the new government in its provisional capital of Yucra, standing in front of a passionate crowd of people waving hastily assembled double cross flags. Needless to say, this has come as a bit of a shock for the military and civilian governments that Jeffersonian militias have been declaring patriotic rebellion against. The nascent Jefferson is small and lacks much in the way of population and industry, and its identity as a separate state or nation still needs proving, however. Jefferson may not be forced to fight the giants in its re region alone. Certainty. Certainly. The state could find common cause with other co uh, contenders to the American government, provided the grievances could be addressed. State of Jefferson. Gilbert Gabble. Gilbert, Gilbert, Gilbert Gabble. Alright, who's next? Do we have any authority left? Probably not. Cool. Do we get to do any of this stuff? Maybe. We'll see what happens. Education for all? Why not? Education is not a mere privilege, but it is a necessity to live freely. By ensuring that everyone is well educated, and we can ensure that people get better paying and more innovative jobs, ensure that even those who don't get jobs are smart enough not to get fooled by the bosses. A well-educated workforce is the end of the plutocrats. Oh, another research slot. Five. Oh, that's really good. Grab loads of fuel, uh, and but research speed first. There you go. We're still building in Iowa. Until they rebel. We don't have a lot of territory left. Phoenix Rising, here we go. Mexican encroachment. The secession of every state around Arizona and the independence of the Navajo. The final agon agonizing stages of the federal breakdown. The void of authority in the American Southwest has seen a final claimant step up and declare independence. With the shattering of the state of Arizona and the lack of statements from the governor, the city council of Phoenix has taken matters into its own hands and declaring some form of sovereignty. Major John, Mayor John Hunt Udell has refrained from lofty promises, but has stated that he will do his utmost to salvage the independence and safety of his home state. Needless to say, the situation for the remnants of Arizona seemed dire. The decision to forge Phoenix's own path seems almost foolhardy when another federal claimant or military clique could offer the city protection. Indeed, observers have not ruled out the new regime joining another state around it, whether consensually or not. But of course, the city council and the diligent mayor could make the most out of their situation if disorder were to strike their neighbors. It is at least hoped that the government can secure a good peace or equitable solution for the people under jurisdiction, but what if they could achieve even more? Oh, Mexico, you took more territory. How dare you. John Hunt Udale. So really only these guys have a unique focus tree. Not even Texas has a unique focus tree, which just sucks. But maybe in the future they'll get one. I love how strong the South is right now, though. But they really need to, you know, kind of link up. Come on, guys. Link up, please. Please. Take Cuba while you're at it. You just form the golden circle if you can. So do we... Can we... can? Oh, filter cosmetic tech event. Bottom text. And... Well, where are the West United Communities of America? Well, I guess there we have it. Screw these divisions then. We're going to go and go to the National Guards, probably. Uh, I'm not really sure what we can do here. So, we change our colors. 
And now we're like almost an entirely different nation now. The American Collapse. Cool. Uh, when, when Elizabeth Gurley Flynn assumed the presidency following the assassination of James Renshaw Cox, Renshaw Cox Viewed high hopes for her administration. The first woman and the first anarchist to hold office, Flynn nonetheless exceeded expectations, alienating virtually every element of the American political landscape outside her own IWW camp. Her short stay in the oil of the office was marked by chaos as Cox's efforts to end the Dust Bowl and provide unemployment relief collapsed in the face of defections from her party in opposition to her radical policies. Losing control over the federal apparatus in the face of open fines from state governments, military officers, and the general public, the power of the federal government is broken down. Flynn has fled to a territory in the upper Midwest occupied by our militias and proclaimed an American Commonwealth, while some military has formed an emergency council in the southeast to manage the crisis. Elsewhere, state and local governments now answer to no one. Nothing's more unpredictable than the mob. Do we have any uh, music here? Nothing more obscure than public opinion. Nothing more deceptive than the whole political system. Well, it sounds like there might be something, but it's hard to hear. Wake up. Um, there's nothing here on the right, so... I guess we're going to keep going until we can kill each other off, right? No, we're not here. Education for all. Right to information. I don't want to lose the PP yet. Let's just do healthcare for all next. We're going to lose a lot of PP, but we'll get a lot of stability. Which really doesn't mean too much when we get plus 5% every week. Even though it seems like we've had that for a while. I guess organized crime really hurts us, as well as clan uh, civil war. Why do we still have a clan civil war? Does, it, it, I guess the clan still technically is in our territory, but... Alright, please stop giving me divisions, uh, Philippines, please. So, when can we go boom, boom, boom with other groups here? Capital ships are nice. We like capital ships, as well as fighters. Probably, yeah. After that, and, medic, and medicine for the sick. And those who become sick in the country as of, not, as of right now are treated as filth by employers and the government. We need better medical services and also more protections for the sick in the workplace. No one deserves to suffer more just because of an ailment. Rather, they should be shown compassion and care from all parts of society. Well, I guess so, but uh, we lost a lot of territory here. Help them out first. It's, they're really close to finishing up. There you go. That's a little better. Um, so can we kill off our enemies now? Do we have... I want a stabilized coalition. Well, coalition doesn't kind of exist anymore. Not going to lie. It's kind of gone. But I guess we'll do right to information, which has no description. Fund the radio stations. Of all the things people like about the industrial workers of the world, one of the more popular reasons is music. Good old country music is not only nice, nice to listen to, but a great way to spread a message to the downtrodden and jobless. By funding IWW stations in particular, we can ensure that every worker is singing which side are you on when they go to work that day. Well, my friends, apparently World War II has started. I think avant-garde France declared war in Germany after they defeated the Austrians. And Italy's a mess with Fiume here, and they're actually with the French, so... The League Solar with Fiume is fighting the Germans, who's fighting the Italians. Even though the Germans aren't fighting the Italians, but it's very weird. But we've just finished off. Fund the radio stations and pensions for the old. The old and the weak are doomed. That is the motto of the capitalist parties. If they can't suck the life and labor out of a person, they'll throw them away like trash under the new government. The elderly will receive higher pensions and will get better medical and financial aid in general than they did before. Not only is this the more moral option, but this also means that they are more likely to vote for us in the upcoming elections, which is a nice added bonus. Hurts our consumer goods. We get more uh, stability, though, which is nice, but, like, we don't really need more stability, but okay. Looks like Japan took out Vietnam as well. So, can we kill each other yet? But let's do stabilize the coalition, I guess. The sudden death of the president has thrown the government into chaos and disarray. The first order of our business is to make everyone cool their jets and get back to the business at hand. If we can do that, we can start rebuilding this country into something great. A better America. A fair America. Oh, is this supposed to happen? 1938 General Conference. It's 1940. What do you mean a better America? In 1938. What? What? I do not understand. Nice. After that, we'll go and grab some improved infantry equipment too. Is America just destined to collapse? Or, not really destined to collapse, but... If this happens, are we just going to collapse and that's it? Is that all we can do? Well, that's not too bad. Actually, go down by 3 then. Go down under there. And go down under there. There you go. Share the wealth. As someone famous once said, share the wealth. 
Alright, save as a coalition, I guess. Uses Cox Legacy. James Cox was a kind and earnest man who wanted nothing less than a better America. It was a bit short-sighted in his vision of how to get there, but one cannot deny his courage and ability. His legacy is ours, and we shall represent his ideas and cause wherever there is political and economic tyranny. He may be dead, but his soul marches on. Crush the backlash, huh? 100%, wow. Civil rights for all. Oh, we lose... Oh, Yakutia is going to be on this one. Civil rights? We lose weekly stability, but that's okay. We get plus 5% anyway, so... Doing that seems pretty okay with us. Uh, wow, this looks... Really sucky for some people. I'm glad it's not us, though. Grumbleman Avenger, nice. Grab some naval bombers as well. And what do we got over here? Fighters? Fighters? Naval bombers? Yes, no? Okay, I guess we don't have any naval bombers. Wow. Southeastern Union, led by who? Mykola Ryabovil. Alright, how... Oh, wow, Germany's doing quite well. Against Mama Anna. Libertarian Socialists. That's not a lot of manpower. That's a lot of manpower. These guys must be assaulting extremely hard. Free trade. Oh, they're on volunteer only. That makes sense. And you guys are on volunteer only. Oh, you're both on volunteer. How do you have a million map with a volunteer only, huh? I love the animated flags here, though. But use, use, use Cox's legacy. And we can use that PP because we have minus 800 right now. But whatever. PP is just a number. And the police. Demo democracy at home. Let's do that one next. Women are still seen as second-class citizens by many Americans, even fellow socialists. This is unacceptable. They have contributed just as much to this country as men have. They deserve to have just as much control over what goes on at home as a man does. Being a republic of labor includes all labor, and what's more tiring than the taking care of the kids? Sometimes working, maybe. Wow, Germany is doing quite well. How is uh, Luxembourg doing? Councilist Luxembourg. They look very libertarian old. Marxist. Okay, he looks very old. Circle of Steel. That's the uh, intelligence agency for Brother to Steal, right? That's their intelligence agency. Huh. How are the Dutch doing? Wilhelmina just looks like she's just tired of her crap. She's just like, are we done yet? <laughs> she just looks old. And Poland? Oh, you're at war. Oh, you're at war with the Prussians. No, Belarusian Revolutionary Republic. They're accelerationists. Ukrainian, Southeastern. Oh. Oh. Wow, the Intermarium. Oh, they're fighting the Russians. Okay. Use this Cox Legacy. Civil rights and democracy at home first. So we can get all that stuff in there, which is nice. We don't really care about it too much. And in the workplace. Oh, we get more daily political power. Bourgeois, not allowed here. The worker will now decide how to best run things. They have toiled there and know far better than the masters on how to manage it. Workplace democracy is necessary for human freedom and a better America. Let's get some more casts. Nice. And since we're here, it is 1940. Let's grab some better engineers, because I don't know how this is going to, what this is going to turn into. Carrier fighters. Mobile defense. Integrated support. I've heard integrated support. That the other one, the other support is just, just really, really bad. That's what I heard, at least. Oh, fighter 2s. Wait, no. Whoopsie. Fighter carrier fighter 2s. Well, everything is just falling apart here in the world. Wow. Wow. Italy's doing... Oh! Okay. They've lost southern Italy to Fiume. But northern Italy and southern, wow. How strong is Italy right now? I almost never play Italy. Fiume? No manpower, no wonder. I guess this is historical, so... Is Germany destined to win, I guess? Here are the voices. What is historical for France, actually, before they die? Um, ah, this is historical over here, huh? Escadron for all? Ah, I remember, I did this path before. Here are the voices. Democracy's home is nice. And what's next? Civil rights for all? Uh, and in the workplace. Let's do, yeah, we do this one next. Yeah, that's better. And after that one, and the police, I guess. The police exist not to stop crime, but to protect property. Whether that property was slaves and or land, they've existed to defend the plutocrats and stop anyone who seeks to challenge them. We don't need the, them to deal with crime, especially with their justice reforms and communal militias. They can leave their weapons and badges at the door for, for now one. For now one. Huh. Improved guns? Alright. Well, I just want to get see see how far we can go. These guys are going to die. But uh, I want to see how far we can go with this. Like, is there any of the content? Like, once we get to the focus tree? I really have no idea. So I want to see what if there's anything there. Can we not kill each other? Oh! Well. There goes those guys. Better radar's cool. But you know what I like even better than radar? Better radar. We're still building ourselves up. 
Man, you have to capitulate so much of France to cut them off. Oh, there's an island here. The Channel Islands. Okay. Guess that makes sense. Then we got a week left for our, our focus, which is fine. And there is going Brest. Oh, the poor Brest. Bye, Brest. And Nantes. Where's the capital now? And the police. Close down the prison system. The prison system exists to lock up enemies of the bourgeoisie and whoever they don't like. Not to punish criminals today. This testament to cruelty shall be ended and rehabilitation and less coercive methods shall be used to deal with antisocial behaviors and activities. Our new society shall be built on freedom, not cages. More manpower, less stability, more revolutionary anarchism, which are still at 58%. So, um, I'm not really sure what else to say about all this stuff. It's just that it is what it is, I guess. Atomic research. Goodbye, Filipino divisions. How is China in this timeline? Are they just forever destined to be... Oh, well, I found Cheng Clique split up. Do they, I guess they don't have any content, do they? No, they look all pretty much generic focus tree. Prussian Congo? Oh, no. Anui Clique has some stuff. That's cool. That's cool. How about the Zili Clique? No. The Feng Chin Clique's got SF, right? Yeah, they do. Corporate review. That's kind of cool. Cool. After we get defund the police or whatever, um, then we'll close down the prison systems. Engineers are nice, but, uh, half tracks, because we can. And I guess after that, I guess we gotta get civil rights for all, huh? This new act shall ensure that never again shall any injustice be permitted. No one be subjected to terror and disenfranchisement because of who they are, be they African American, migrant, female, or worker. This new bill shall make it a lot of respect and not interfere with the laws of anyone because of such things. For no one can truly be free without ability to be safe from harm. Alright, well, whatever. And why? And how was Prussian Congo? Do they have instability or... Oh, oh, that's just a Japanese thing to do, I guess. I guess they got cores on all this place, huh? Oh, they all have cores on them. Okay. And who's down here now? Ernst Junge. Alright, Ernst. Well, you probably don't want to go back to Germany right now. They're not doing so well. Oh, well. Yeah, it is 41. Got some not of that. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. There you go. Output, close down the prison systems, and civil rights for all. After that, we're running out of focus here this year, so I guess we'll do Crush the Backlash. 70-day focus. Oh, my goodness. And the price system. Daily political power goes down. Weekly stability goes down, but weekly war support goes up. A better America. A fairer America. Huh, much has been done to make this country a better and fairer place. The American citizen is now judged by their intelligence and labor, not by their wealth, race, or national origin. We're living in a country much better than the one we entered, and all shall prosper freely now for the first time in our history. The dream has been achieved at last, versus a better America. America wakes up today to a brave new sound of that of socialism. No longer shall people be exploited by bosses, politicians, husbands, or clansmen. All shall live freely to work and relax as they please in a well-regulated and democratic society. We have proven that socialism is far from a pipe dream. It is an achievable and desirable reality. Wow. Okay, so there's two of them here. They're, oh my gosh, that's actually 70 day focus versus a 35 day focus. But we gotta do Crush the Backlash next. Which seems like America probably has more content later on. And it's still being developed, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Ethiopia looks completely shattered. Um, so when does, when does France collapse? That's not cool. They had to take out Tunis? What is this, Fuhrerreich? After you take out the mainland, you have to go to North Africa? Oh, that sucks, man. That really sucks. I guess that's when you use paratroopers, I guess. Uh, who else do we have here? Do we... Well, I guess we, oh, we still have occupied Nicaragua, which I don't understand why we've... I guess maybe free companies and stuff like that, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. Hey! Prussian Congo, nice. Um, I guess we can build some more dockers if we really want to as well. Party, Get some of that, too. That'd be nice. Very cool. I mean, our army's ready to go for whatever we need. So... Bang Shin Clique is, even though they're at war, they went to war with someone else. Alright then. Goodbye. And Crush the Backlash will be done soon with all that stuff. And Yugoslavia. Oh my goodness. Yugoslavia looks really bad with Montenegro there. He looks kind of handsome though. Kind of astute. And Montenegro does have war is Slavic culture. Do not culturally appropriate the Slavs. I guess. I don't know. I'm a Slavic, so. And guns are looking pretty good. Not too bad. This has been a very weird campaign. Even though it feels like it's, it's about to end, it's kind of short, so... Ceylon. Oh, it looks kind of cool. Ishan? Yugoslav? Oh, I guess she has seen that one coming. 
Now, which one of these guys has a unique focus tree? Vanguard is socialist. No, that's the point. You guys don't. Um, peace coverage. Oh, well, there they go. Less lag. That's not great. Oh, California actually did go to war with them. Jurica. Half tracks, cool. I guess scout cars. I don't know. That's really disgusting. Can you not at least make it unified? Like give Italy like southern parts of France. That is so bad. Like one, two, three. You could own one, two, three. Literally give them that stuff. God dang the AI. I swear to God, the AI is special. I think it was Montenegro though. And crush the backlash. Well, can we do? Uh, well, I guess we'll do next up and the price system. Uh, no longer will pricing and money be used to deal with the distribution of goods. The success of the community programs have shown that people can be trusted enough to be responsible and fair in managing goods and services. Let us end the reign of the dollar and that of the weapon of tyrants and begin the reign of the work. Reign of work. That's a 35-day focus, which is nice. Cool. Um, yeah. That, why? You, wouldn't you want Savoy? Why wouldn't they want Savoy? How's Anna doing? Mama Anna. Oh, boy. You with their Japanese comrades. Jap... Germany and Japan working with each other? Oh, that does not sound good. Oh, well, oh, there goes Albania. Well, I expect about from Albania. Yugoslavia is looking kind of nicer. Kingdom of Transylvania? Eastern Banat. No unique focus tree. Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Wow, you're looking kind of thick. What happened to Romania? What did you do to them? The revisionist socialist. You got, you got a fat man. You got, a, you got that chin. And that's okay. Uh, Turks? Enver Pasha? No, okay. Uh, Andrew the First, Russian Empire. Well, what happened over China? Actually, and the price system. And oh, uh, we're gonna do the better record because that one gives us a conference as well. So we'll see what happens there. Because this one is nice and all, but it, it looks like it just gives us stability, nothing else. So that kind of sucks. Bayang Governance, Far East Republic. Yakut, Diaz is looking pretty thick. Pavel Senovlov. And we have the Russian state, led by Bydalakov. I guess Bosnians. Oh, boy. Oh, they rose up. Bosnians rise up, huh? Integrated support is nice. I guess we'll go with regimental combat teams. Well, there go the Bosnians. They tried. We only have minus 1,400 political power. I guess it makes sense for a revo re you know, revolutionary anarchist group here. And we're about two thir one third done through this focus. But, man, this has been... A this is so weird. Red Flood is odd, to say the least. George S. Mercurius. No, no unique focus tree either, huh? Oh, the UK. They got a unique focus tree. Herbert Morrison, huh? Yeah, they do. That is not bad. What is this? Soup Snap elections. Not, it's not soup kitchen. Snap elections. Burden of War. Is there a reason why it's green? Like, do they have to fight the Irish? That'd be kind of cool. And about two-thirds done. So, yeah, Luxembourg looks very weird there. So, can they ally with the Third International, of course? Oh, they, they do have Hungary there, too. Greece. And Tamaria was doing quite well. Belarus. Oh, Simon comes there. Is, wait, was he really a Belarusian? United again? Revolutionary Commission on Agitation and Propaganda. Socialist Black Market. Alliance with Black Cat. Did he talk to H.P. Lovecraft about his name? Agarian Socialism. Advanced Oil Processing. That's cool. Let's get some more fuel refining because we can. Finland. Or Republic of Finland. Warlord Indifference. Okay. They do have a kind of a unique focus tree. Alright, so the 1938 April General Conference. What would have been the third LDS General Conference during Cox's time in office has instead become a clear near call against the general authorities perceived as lawless banditry. With record breaking numbers of members tuning in, tuning in by radio. A total able to hear the messages from the past two days number in, mil in the millions. Herber, J. Grant, has called the assassination of Cox a political tragedy, saying that while Cox was a tyrant, at least the ballots could defeat him. The law is villain to replace him don't respect the authority of the people or any authority. As they do not form a government that reflects our values of liberty, the time to fight for our freedom from tyranny by the lawlessness will soon come to pass. We have the right to feel safe in our homes and communities. I urge all saints around the globe to prepare themselves to fight lawlessness, even if they live abroad. It's only been a day since the conclusion of the conference and around the world gun purchases by Mormons in countries with gun rights are surging. Anti-anarchist sentiments are deeply carved in a powerful culture overnight, with even the British and Danish Mormon communities arming themselves as to, not, as to tell anarchists in their nations to not even think about it. Looks like we need to free them from their church next. Well, I, is that it for us? Is that literally it? Um, 
I, I guess that's it for us. I guess we can do this one. Lagarde's presidency, so... The border situation in Texas. Uh, no. Um, I guess that's it for us. Everything collapses. And I don't think we have any anything else here, so... I guess that's it for us. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and... Maybe in the next video, we might just go ahead and, uh... Do some... California, maybe? But, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord... Oh! Oh, hold on. We're not done yet. The arrival of a new anarchist order in America was destined to be controversial, and the Northwest was no exception. Emboldened by Flint's assumption of power, the unemployed councils organized farmers and IWW members, and even mobilized inhabitants of the massive Seattle Mellonville, as taken to the streets marching triumphantly and beginning the steps of dismantling the bourgeois state. Conflict between the lower classes and police across the region are ha already recalling the worst days of past general strikes. Making matters worse, a number of citizens, whether self-motivated or paid by corporate interests, have formed malicious to resist the incipient social and economic revolution. Well, this is hardly unique in America right now. The simmering conflict in the region is sub subject of national fear, with the responses ranging from claiming the struggle is long overdue to fearing America is about to undergo its own Russian civil war. In the midst of all of this, without much indication of what the federal government's next move will be, state governments are split on the next step they should take. Some days are marked with calls for peace, while others met with thunderous proclamations that order will be restored. For now, the situation only continues to escalate. The center cannot hold. Before I was interrupted by this, is there anything else here? Like... It feels like this is this is it. Like, do, if there's no civil war earlier. If, if if the states were seceding, we'd have a civil war, right? I guess not. So if we do this in real life, no one will come and knock. And as long as the states all independently secede themselves. So I guess, like I tried to say earlier, I guess this is it. So I guess I'll see you all in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.